My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're going to take a re-look at this BMW uh, crankshaft. And I've been reading through the comments, and there were loads of things um, that were said, and so on, and so on, and so on. Um, so, I'm going to put my reputation on the line here. <laughs> After looking at these parts, uh, looking at the conrod, the small end, looking at this looking at all the evidence in a sense we had at first i thought after looking at it this is so smashed up and stuff we will won't be able to really work out anything however i think i know and what we're going to do is um before i get all usually like i say you make no assumptions and stuff and you basically got to get all the data before you start trying to piece it together i thought it would be fun to put my credibility <laughs> on the line and make a prediction so this crankshaft is solid we haven't i haven't done anything <coughs> yet there are two things um that i want to talk about right now and failures are usually down to two things generally with engines just two things um and let me re rephrase that they're usually down to two things when you see catastrophic fails like this, like this rod that's broken. And what you usually look at, or what I'm always interested in look at, is the heaviest thing and the fastest thing. So the heaviest thing in this failure is the crankshaft and the, um, what's the other word? The fastest thing is the piston. So they're the two things. And why is that? Well, because heavy things, uh, if they are in motion, means they have a lot of inertia and when they're actually moving momentum and fast things are obviously they've got that velocity they are already going fast so this stores a lot of energy because of its mass the piston on the other hand has a lot of speed and it's vice versa this might be not going as fast as the piston but it's a lot heavier so the forces are higher when you have a piston it might be lighter but it's going a lot faster the forces are high you know if you something like this you don't automatically look at your horn switch and go maybe there's something wrong with that it might seem obvious but a lot of guys were saying oh the conrod the conrod the conrod well the conrod is the thing that broke but the conrod broke because it's between something that's heavy and between something that's fast you know what i mean and you know it's in a sense like if you jumped off a fucking two-story building your legs will break but it's your mass and the ground the immovable object being the ground and your mass accelerating under gravity. Your legs, in a sense, were in the middle of it. So everyone was talking about inclusions and bad design of the rod and, you know, bad manufacturing, blah, 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 blah. And they were missing the two main points. And most people, nearly everyone, a lot of people are saying pistons hit the valve and then, you know, we eventually saw that and stuff. Pistons hit the head, pistons this, pistons that. And a lot of it wasn't. A lot of it was talking about the rod, and that's the problem, is focusing on the rod. We are very, very lucky, extremely lucky, that when the small end broke, it didn't... It was basically flung out of action and was saved. Very, very lucky, because that tells us a lot. Um, I've made this picture. I'll put a link so you can, you can go and have a look at this picture yourself. This is a picture. It's like a mosaic of, like, eight images of the actual fractured rod. Um, so you can actually see that yourself and have a look. It's very interesting what's going on in there. And we will cover that um, in a later video, basically. I'll just do a video about that actual failure. But there's two things about this crankshaft that everyone fucking missed. They kind of just glazed over. Ah, not bothered. Number one is the burn mark. This burn mark, you see that dark discoloration? This is asymmetry. This side isn't, this side is. There's a burn mark all the way around there. And this means that oil has been burnt in there. This means that this got fucking hot. The other thing is the chatter on this bearing. Let me bring you in. Master of Zoom. If we look at this bearing race, it's asymmetri asymmetrical. We always look for asymmetrical things. You can see there that it's chowdered and then it's not. Right, that is the inner race of this bearing. And we're going to look at the bearing, we're going to take the bearing apart and have a look at that. You can see it's perfect and then it just turns to shit. Now, this 
is overload, right? This isn't corrosion or anything else like that. The other bearing race, so this side, this side, you can see that bearing race there is fine. And that's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. This is like the R3 failure analysis we looked at. We're looking for asymmetry. If one piston melts and the other one doesn't, then that's giving us clues. That's narrowing down what we're looking at. But you can see that not only is this chowdered to fuck, it just stops. It just stops. And the weirdest thing is, is this is when the piston is, the crankshaft is in this location. So when the piston's at bottom dead centre and it starts again as it's about, no, I don't know, what's that? 20 degrees, something like that. And then we've got really heavy marks there, really shitty marks. This, if you look in bearing books, this is a classic overload failure. Basically, this has just been taking too much force. Which brings us... <coughs> excuse me. Which brings us to our failure of the whole thing. I'm going to make a prediction now. The cases were misaligned. That's my prediction. My prediction is, is that the case, the casements that hold these cylindrical roll bearings was titty wampus. She was upside down like this. She was basically misaligned. Now, there was a presentation. Thank God for that. There's a G450 presentation by BMW showing you all the things. And I'll show you this picture. It shows you the crankcase. It shows you the oil bath. And it shows you that little uh, trough that I was talking about so your oil doesn't butt your bloody cylinder, um, your crankshaft, stuff like that. But you can see there's only two dowels. There's one on the left, one on the right, and that's it for the entire casing. Really? That's mental. Now, has this engine been apart? I need to ask the guy who owns the engine. Has this engine been apart? Or by the dealership, and they've missed a dowel. Or it's just been misaligned somehow. Now, the thing is, cylindrical roller bearings, which are what, fit it, are what are fitted to this, cylindrical roller bearings do not like misalignment whatsoever, which has probably caused this. Because that is actually the width of the rollers, right? That's why there's a, a shiny bit around the outside. That is where the rollers make contact. And we'll look at the roller in more detail. If I have a look, I'm trying to look to see if there's any shit scars. There might be. We need to take that in a race off and have a look at it closer with a microscope and stuff like that. But I reckon this whole thing was tilted up. So when you went like that, I went on the power stroke, this one's higher, and it went bang, and that caused the overloading for the bearing. Not only that, but if you tip this up, so basically there's our centre line. If we tip it like this, this is exaggerated, obviously. If we tip it like this, so that would be for you, that would be parallel. If we tip this up like this, then this rod is going to rub against there like that. Or would it be... No, it'd be that way, sorry. It'd be that way. We tip it like this, so actually this bearing is mis misaligned either this one's higher this one's lower i imagine this one was lower in the cases let me see if i can get you lined up so it's more like that so basically this rod is rubbing on the inside of here that's why it's getting hot which also caused over time that bend in that rod because the piston is perpendicular to this axis and this thing's bending it it's bending it like that. Now, why do I think it's not? Why do I think it's the the cases were misaligned and not the cylinder? Well, the reason why is because of this overload here. If the crankshaft was running perfectly true, then the cylinder was misaligned. This same kind of thing would happen. It would just look like this. But you can see we've got this bend at the root, which is very, very rare. It's very rare to have this to have a bend at the root like that. So it's bending at the root. This was the weakest. This is basically the skinniest part of the rod. This is where it cracked. It's a fatigue failure. You can see that from the pictures. There's basically, we can see there's benchmarking. So it slowly cracked and cracked and cracked and cracked and cracked and cracked over time until basically the rod gives up and then it all just turns to shit. But this mark here, this is not a thousand revolutions as it's slowing down from being fucked. This is not it being broken that way. This is a fatigue failure, overload failure over quite a long time. Same as this burning here, this won't just happen instantly like this. So my prediction is, is that when we take these, when we separate this crankshaft, that we will see, you know, basically damage to the inside of this face here, and we will see damage to the bearing or the crank pin or something like that. We should see something in here um, where basically this rod has been rubbing. And it should be rubbing on this side as well slightly. It's just if it's because there's the slop either side there, there's clearance. If this rod has been thrust against that surface and then tipped, so basically we push the rod that way 
and then I pull towards me up here, this rubs down here, but it doesn't touch there. There's a gap in there. There's a gap on this side. It doesn't touch any of that. Now, right from the first video, when we first saw this cron crankshaft, I showed you this bearing. I showed you this bend in the rod, and I pointed out that, and everyone just ignored it. <laughs> These teeth broken here, I reckon this is after the fact. I reckon this is how debris is flying around. It gets basically if debris gets jammed in here and these teeth roll round, it's a that's where it jammed in, it's a crunch point, and then teeth broke off. Um you know, which where your gear is, your balancer is here, so it's basically about there. So you can imagine some debris falling in here and just getting crunched and mushed. I'll ask the guy if he's got a picture of the gear for the balancer shaft as well. See if we can, you know this that and the other a lot of this damage is probably hitting the balancer shaft the balancer shaft runs right here literally next to it spinning away here like a madman and that probably did a lot of damage and all the rest of it but i reckon this broke this just free wheels this is not bothered now and it just bats into well bats into whatever it wants it just bats into cases bats into this and then as the piston come down it basically got jammed in there like that bounced back hit the conrod big end and just fell down like basically just fell down like that um but yeah, I, I'm making a prediction before the fact. When we separate this, I need to get these races off, get that pin out, get these races off, get this gear off, and then we can basically just use the press, force this out, and um, have a look what's under here. As you can see, I can't really, I can't see anything in there. But we're looking for some kind of scuffing and some kind of damage. We're looking for something. You know what I mean? Maybe it did contact this surface. Maybe it did thrust this way and then basically proper pivot and do both sides but there doesn't seem to be any real cooking compared to this side you know what i mean um people are saying about like stuff like oil starvation stuff like that um yes this bearing is the furthest away oil feed comes in this way goes through the crank comes back out to this bearing um but this is an overload failure like i say on the other side we're all we're all gravy that's all lovely is that side it's just this side here and that's when the crank is on the power stroke basically that's when the bearings oh it goes that way sorry that's when the bearings take the brunt and um cylinder pressures are higher there than they are at the bottom we've seen that and it's actually on this side where this fretting this spalling on here is the worst it's really fucking bad but yeah that's this is these races are hard as fucking a coffin's coffin and um that's really taking a fucking beating as that over time like I say, we'll get these races off and have a look. Hope that makes sense. Hope I don't like a complete cunt, but that is my um, interpretation of just looking at this. Um, you know, yes, we've got a snap rod. You know, that's horrific. Yes, we've got another ro other side of the rod, which also fucked, and the piston's all knackered, and the cylinder's breached, and all the rest of it. But these are the most interesting things. They're very close to each other, and this shouldn't happen. This just shouldn't happen. You know what I mean? So as the dealership or some bastard been in here and just misaligned the cases, you know what I mean? It can rotate because there's all this slop in here, you know, there's all this slop, but as when you start to heat up the engine and stuff and everything starts to thermally expand, you know, it's just going to turn to shit. Just going to turn to shit. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit. The microphone now. All right, let's get this shit apart. Is that going to be the right size? Yeah, we'll go with that. God, I've had this kit fucking forever. Let's get all this shit off. Oh, do you know what? I'm going to have to be in the toolbox, bastard. I can get one in. Fucking bastard. No. Oh, I see. You can't see shite. Hopefully this will do it. Da, 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 da. These are some better days, aren't they? Fucking hell. 
<laughs> you can't be kidding me. Motherfuckers. No. Oh, that's for nothing. Well, well, where are we going? There we go. Not to self, get a bell mouth for this. Wow, Matt, why don't you do more hands on videos? Because they're interesting. Oh, do you know what? Fucking. Ah! <laughs> Nothing fits. Motherfucker. There's nothing I can get on them. There I can. But there I can't. Three pronged attack isn't even going to work because I can't get. Another fucking bastard. Oh, how can I grab that? I'm just going to have to use heat. We got it. That's up for that. Oh. <coughs> oh, stop it. Hit towards the vice twat.
Come on. I just want to ping up <laughs> in my face. going God this race she doesn't want to come off now she's coming now Wish I'd clamped it there. Sixty percent of the time. It works every time. Now we can get back to this shite. Ah, <laughs> obviously. I've not been able to touch it because it's hot. Take that off for fuck's sake. Right then. Ah, hot, 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 hot. That's fantastic. So fucking hot though. Hot, 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 hot. It's like some things are really cold and some things are really fucking hot. <laughs> Do you know what, tighten these up, we'll probably fucking pull it off. Right. Let's see if I can move the light and get you in a good position. Oops. Right, there we go. So. Yeah, we're all good. Slap this on. Over there, like so. These never have to be tight. Anything stupid like that, not really, not for this. Is that grabbing or is that sliding? Jesus T Christ. That is fucking on there. Get a longer spanner knob, but it'll give you more torque. Physics 101, Matt. Come on. I can't see. See anything? What the 
fuck's sake? Seventeen. Fucking hell, fine. Why is that so difficult? Shut up your whinging. Look at the length of this bar. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking length of this. Come on, you've got to be there now, surely. You are holding on for dear life. That is one tight, well fit bearing. Jesus. There's our bearing race. Sweet. And she's going to be fucking hot. Yow. Right, so obviously this is where you have to be careful where any marks that we've left, it looks like we've left fuck all on it. The mole grips were not going to do it. SKF, bearing number on the side of it, thrust washer, and this is something that's really, really quite interesting. They've nibbled a bit out of the crank right in there. Uh, you'll see close-ups, but they've basically had to nibble <laughs> out. You see the washer, the thrust washer's discoloured, but the thrust washer's discoloured because that was the exposed section there, and that's due to us hitting it with the heat. Um, yeah, so we can ignore that. That's not... You see, it's very thin. I think that's... 100 microns maybe that's the thrust washer for that and uh, now to get the do we need to get the other side off that was such a massive fucking pain in the ass we don't need that to separate the crank we need access to this our crank pin right then let's see if we can break something I don't know how this is going to do with the light or my arm in the way. <coughs> Let's see if we can do it without my arm. It should be alright. Yes! <laughs> should be alright. Yes! 